Welcome back to Bike Matters, I'm Roger and today we're looking at the A2 friendly cruiser from Honda, the CMX500 Rebel. As you can see, it's quite a looker. I'm looking forward to this one, let's get into it. So the engine is a 471cc liquid cooled parallel twin. It puts out 45 brake horsepower peaking at 8,500 RPM and 43 newton meters of torque peaking at 6,000 RPM. So from those stats, it's a nice and accessible bike. Perfectly suited for A2 riders, you could jump straight on one of these. It's not intimidating, it's very easy to ride, but it, it still has a little bit of pull about it. It's, it's by no means a slow bike. We've taken it out on a bunch of different roads over the last couple of days. We took it on the A roads, it got up to speed pretty rapidly, it cruised at 70 miles an hour, um, and it still felt like it had plenty more to go if you really wanted to. So yeah, it's a good fun bike that's nice and easy to ride. Now, when it comes to high-tech features, Honda have kept things deliberately pretty basic here. There's no rider modes, there's no traction control or anything like that. It does have ABS as standard, but one feature it does have, which I'm a big fan of, it has a slip and assist clutch. And this clutch is feather light. This is one of the lightest clutches I've ever touched. It just smooths out the rev ranges for you on those downshifts and just helps make the bike even more accessible, even easier to ride. Now, the gearbox is a six-speed, and you do find yourself having to cycle through those gears quite a bit. This bike doesn't really like it at the low rev ranges, especially at low speeds. You've got to be ready with that clutch, you need to cycle through the gears or it will cut out on you. So if you're looking for the kind of bike where you can just be lazy and sit in one gear and it'll kind of do everything for you, this might not be the bike for you. But fortunately, because it's so easy to ride, because those gear changes are so effortless, it's actually kind of fun having a more engaging ride and cycling through those gears anyway. When it comes to suspension, up front we've got a 41mm telescopic fork. It's not adjustable, but for this price, it's as you would expect. On the rear, we've got Showa Pro-Link twin shocks and they are preload adjustable. On the road, it's relatively firm, which I like, but we are in Norfolk, so we've had the chance to run it over some pretty nasty B roads, and it does a great job of absorbing all the lumps and bumps. I didn't really have any jarring impacts or anything like that. It's overall a very comfortable ride, and that's further helped by this beautiful, comfy seat. Speaking of the seat, it is a cruiser, so it's relatively low at 690 millimeters. So it's gonna be a great option for shorter riders. Very easy to flat for this. I'm about average height, 5'10". For me, it's extremely comfortable. If you're on the taller side, you might wanna sit on one of these and just make sure there's enough leg room for you. When it comes to the ride position itself, it's a little bit unusual. Because of the low seat, the bars are quite far forward, so you're in standard cruiser territory there. But the pegs are quite centrally positioned, so you end up kind of halfway between a street bike and a cruiser. Obviously that's a conscious choice from Honda. They want it to be an all-rounder, something that you can do your commute on, you can take it down the shops and be comfortable, but it's still got that cruiser vibe to it. So it's somewhere in the middle. For me personally, I've enjoyed it. It's extremely comfortable and it, it all adds to how easy the bike is to ride and how accessible it is. For brakes, we've got a 296 millimeter single disc on the front with a two piston caliper. And on the rear, we've got a 240 millimeter single disc with a single piston caliper. Now, when it comes to brakes, there's been a lot of criticism about these brakes since the model first came out. And the 2022 model is no different, really. I don't think they're too bad. They, they do the job. They're what I would call adequate. My one criticism would be, I would love a little bit more response on that front brake. When you pull down on the front brake, you don't feel that initial bite that just fills you with confidence that you are going to stop in a hurry. So I found myself most of the time just having to apply a bit of back brake with it. Again, it gets the job done. They're perfectly adequate. But if I was looking for small nitpicky criticisms, I would like a little bit more response on that front brake. The fuel tank is 11 litres. It's relatively slim, which helps with how comfy this bike feels. But it just means that it won't have the longest range in the world. It'll do around 70 miles per gallon. So for the urban market, which this bike is clearly aimed at, most people aren't gonna find a problem, but just something to bear in mind. The Rebel has a nice and simple negative LCD dash. It just does the basics. The speedo is nice and large. You can see it with a simple glance down. It's got a gear indicator so you can see exactly where you're at. And aside from that, 
there's a button on the side that can cycle through the trip meter. When it comes to the switch gear, I am a fan of how robust it is. You've got this nice large light switch here. You can thumb it so easily, you know, you're not going to be fishing around for it in the dark when you need it. Everything just feels well proportioned and well positioned. Now when it comes to the visual style of this bike, you don't need me to tell you that we're in pure badass cruiser territory here. In fact, there aren't many A2 bikes that look quite like this. For me, fully blacked out like this is the way to go. It looks absolutely awesome. But if that's not your style, you can get it in blue, in green, in silver, so the options are there. We've also got a lot of optional accessories available. We've got the fly screen, fork protectors, we've got a diamond quilted seat and a luggage rack on the back. That's all optional. Or for an extra 400 quid, you can get the special edition. That comes with all the extras, plus a very cool blacked out front cowl around that light. Now, speaking of the light, the lights are all fully LED. And for me, that headlight is one of the standout features. It really looks great. Now for an A2 bike, it doesn't just look like an awesome cruiser. It sounds pretty good as well. Uh, I'll give you a, a little taster of what this stock exhaust sounds like here. Now that's pretty damn impressive. So to summarize, the Honda CMX500 Rebel is a very accessible motorcycle. It's A2 friendly, it's easy to ride, easy to manage, nice and lightweight, nice and comfortable. It kind of ticks a lot of boxes here. If you're looking for an A2 bike in this style, I don't think you're gonna find anything quite this good anywhere else. Now, one of the main things to think about here is the price. Brand new, one of these for the standard edition is £6,199. Now, if you want a few more visual bells and whistles, you can get the special edition that comes with all the optional accessories on it, and that's £6,599. Again, I would have liked a little bit more responsiveness on that front brake. I would have liked perhaps a little bit larger fuel tank because it doesn't have the largest range. But for the money, all the great features this bike has, I think it's going to be pretty hard to beat in the A2 category. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do us a favour and hit that thumbs up button. There's plenty more content on the way, so feel free to subscribe, ring that bell, and you won't miss another video. See you in the next one.